Hello everyone, this is Daniel Badillo. Today I want to have a conversation with you about avoidance behavior. As we know, avoidance is the action of keeping away from doing something. It's that uh, perennial struggle from fearing the unknown. Now, truth be told, we've all avoided something or someone in our lifetime. We've all evaded responsibilities. We've all avoided someone in the hallway. We've all sidestepped from confronting someone and defaulted from facing the inevitable. Now, there's a group, and for a majority of people, avoidance have, has become a characteristic of those individuals who say that their principles, their ethics, values don't align with their personal philosophies. So they uh, avoid certain business settings. They avoid certain climates and atmospheres that simply do not align with what they believe in. Now, there's another group that also practices avoidance behavior. And it, but the majority of time is simply used as an intrinsic tool to escape fear and anxiety. Today, I just want to focus and talk to you about regarding those individuals who have low level of commitment to confront a situation, to confront a person or organization for five reasons. And I want to uh, enumerate these as we go. But the first reason is fear of failure. Next is fear of risk. Third, fear of a loss. Fourth, fear of rejection. And last but not least, fear of success. We all know that people avoid situations in the educational system, in the government, in business, in production, in manufacturing, in service, in certain services, business forums, and also religious sectors. Whether you are a nonprofit or a for-profit company, whether you are a private or public organizations, you'll have individuals within those organizations that simply avoid other people and specific situations. The question we have to ask ourselves is, why do people brush off or run around avoiding these things? So today I just want to talk to you and home in on these five factors. So let me just offer you some, some perspective from a different angle so that we can connect uh, throughout this conversation. The first one, why people avoid situations is for fear of failure. People fear to fall short and to be embarrassed by not accomplishing a goal or something personal in their lives, such as maybe uh, maintaining a love relationship or maybe maintaining a certain partnership with someone. Maybe they fail, they have fear of opening a new business uh, to fall short in the expectations of those businesses, whatever goals and objectives, objectives those businesses may have. These are people who have specific talents. They have abilities, they have skills, they have education and life experiences, but simply they lack the confidence to overcome those obstacles. This fear mentally paralyzes all their efforts and creates mental barriers they cannot overcome. And I think uh, throughout our lifetime, throughout our development, whether it be uh, academically, in our career, in our professions, in ministry, we have a fear of failure. We have a fear of falling short of people's expectations. And certainly that creates a, uh, a great burden over our shoulders. If we're not careful enough, it could also derail us from every purpose that we may have, whether it be a religious purpose or a professional purpose. We can just call it quits. And many have thrown in the towel for fear of failure. The second factor that people avoid is called the risk factor. And people procrastinate for the risk that is involved in doing something. People are genuinely scared that in their attempt to do something, or say something, or confront something, they risk being rejected. So people avoid situations that can be risky to their relationship, to their employment, to their business, to their ministry, and their overall social status. However, the reality is that risk is yet another excuse to get things done. You and I are intelligently enough or intelligent enough 
to know that there is always going to be a risk level in everything that we do. Risk comes with the territory. Unfortunately, many people do not achieve their life's purpose for fear of what other people may say about them. So they live their lives day by day, not working on their dreams, not working on their aspiration for the risk level that is involved. As we continue, let me just talk to you about the third factor, which is the fear of loss. People avoid things for fear of losing a certain social business reputation and losing people's approval. Personally, I have seen this in the business sector, whereas individuals avoid confronting someone for fear of losing their business or future investment opportunities. They fear of losing an opportunity for promotion, for advancement, for a raise. So they have a fear of loss. They know that the strategic plan will not work. They know the business model will fail. They know that there's loopholes in the process but they keep projecting a false positive because of fear of losing someone's approval. Truthfully, they have a difficult time not visualizing their success, but rather imagining the terror they would experience if they lose that business, that opportunity, that investment, and specifically that client. The fourth factor of fear and fear avoidance or avoidance behavior is the fear of rejection. Let me start by saying that rejection, it is real. Sometimes we don't know why corporations or people are rejecting you. It's simply a fact of life. They may have their own personal beliefs, values, traditions, standards, philosophies that simply do not align with the status quo and do not align with our ideas or perspectives, and we will be rejected. Rejection hurts, but we must not allow this fear of rejection to blur our vision and disturb our emotional state of being. The last factor that I want to talk to you about, about avoidance behavior, it's the fear of success. That is right. You heard it right. People fear success. People fear success and people avoid progress because they do not know if they can handle the newfound role or responsibility. They fear not being able to meet people's expectations by acquiring a higher position in a business, in a church, or in a corporate America. Some individuals say, if I succeed, I will have to be on the spotlight. I will have to have a broader scope of accountability and obligations. So they avoid success altogether because of the stresses it may bring to their lives. Can you imagine these individuals working so hard? having a long career, uh, finishing their academic endeavors, uh, progressing, working overtime, working long hours, uh, traveling, doing this, doing that, simply uh, to get promoted. And when they are promoted, they fear the fact that they will not be able to uphold that certain position, that certain role for fear of success. So they are confronted with all these obligations and newfound responsibilities that they paralyze. So now let me give you some counsel about avoidance behavior. If you are procrastinating today on something that needs to be accomplished, don't wait any longer. If you're being deliberately distracted, let me say that you will live an unfulfilled life. There are always going to be challenges and impossibilities. There are always going to be the naysayers and the critics to tell you that you cannot do it. The conditions may never be right, and you may not have all the resources, but if you are committed to yourself and value yourself, you must press forward. Visualize yourself succeeding. Visualize yourself accomplishing the goal and believe in the vast potential that resides in you. I know this sounds, I sound like a broken record sometimes, but I want to really inform you that you can do this. You were created to do significant things in the world. Do not allow the fear of psychological failure, the fear of risk, the risk level that comes to stop you. Do not allow the, the fear of loss of approval to detain you. Do not allow rejection to nullify your unique voice. 
Do not allow fear of success to create a barrier to your development process. There is so much more that the world needs of you. If you simply believe and press forward, the doors will surely open in your behalf. Don't stop working on your dreams because you don't have human approval. You and I know we can't please everyone. Remember the saying, vision draws opposition. Let me say that again so it can be seared in your mind and in your spirit. Vision draws opposition. But opposition will make you stronger, will make you better, wiser, more resolute, and confident in all your actions. If this is what you deeply feel you were created to do, work every day to improve yourself and believe in your gut intuition. Be courageous, work in love, be obsessed on what you do and what you're passionate about. If you are persistent, you will achieve full clarity and a greater perspective of what you are definitely created for. So I definitely believe in you. I want to be your cheerleader. I want to be your motivator. And remember, Keep pressing and keep moving forward.